Greetings everyone, here's Lodric. Today we talk again about our game War in the Pacific Admiral's Edition. Last time we had the combat phase and I also show roughly what happened at the end or what was the result. We saw that the second carrier group was uh, sinking or at least striking many enemy cargo ships. Our second cruiser fleet uh, was successful in sinking and damaging one. We sunk the Exeter heavy cruiser and we damaged one additional light cruiser. Uh, this is now already a fixed uh, setup turn. This I sent already some days ago to Dojo. So I can roughly show you what are the next steps. The carriers are burned out of uh, torpedoes. We saw this already in the combat animation that the torpedo bombers starting to using only bombs and not more torpedoes. So burned out. This Oh no, this is a destroyer. Oh, oh, oh. Other direction. So no torpedoes, no torpedoes, no torpedoes more, no torpedoes. This guy have not even more torpedoes and he also is at the limit. He cannot even make nearly more any sorties. And there's really no torpedoes more left. So no torpedoes means more or less for me go back to port, try to rearm. Uh, fix some smaller damage because this is normally always happening. If you run some fleet, the system damage will go over time always up. And I try always, if possible, keep it at zero, but normally everything at 10 latest you must repair. Uh, or in worst case, you just enter a battle and your system damage is already up and then you have only disadvantages. So much more we cannot say here. Uh, it was a successful operation, but I don't have the fuel and I don't have the torpedoes and we must call this now the end of this operation. But I, uh, I call in some submarines, so we will try to get a position around the Rangoon and uh, around Cylon with our submarines so that we maybe can still sink some cargo ships. Or if there's some cruiser coming, a damaged cruiser, maybe we can finish him off. And uh, Malaya is still waiting that the last units are arriving, so we have still here some part of the 18th division. They are moving now because it's make no sense to uh, first load them on the train, then drive the train down, then unload the train. There's better I can move here. Normally one turn, means two days, is enough to walk on the highway, uh, means uh, two days for one hex. So in two turns we arrive here, then at turn three we can regroup here at everything so that we get the maximum power together, so everything what is uh, ready to regroup, we will regroup, get the division done, and then we walk in Singapore. And uh, if you plan any really bigger land battles or operations, you always better use a uh, key one to show you uh, what type of hex you will enter or stay in. Like this is clear terrain. This means it's open. There's nothing special. This is jungle, jungle, jungle rough means it's mountain plus jungle, here's also jungle, and UI is a uh, light city. You always can find this in the top right corner here, it's uh, Alaska more or less. There you, I can switch this off, there we have this UI, is, uh, means the defense guy get double value. So every, everything is defense, if you defend something, your combat values will be doubled. Um, and heavy urban means, uh, I don't know, maybe like Los Angeles or 
you get a, you know, even four times the defense bonus. But most is clear is nothing, desert is nothing, rough is already twice. So twice is often, then you have always mountains, is always normally triple. So you must keep this uh, in your calculations that uh, if you want to attack Singapore, now we have here so far 40,000 guys ready and uh, more are coming here. Are Again, 5,000 guys coming here, here 500 more, so in total we have, let's say, 50,000 guys ready. We may know that here are maybe 25,000 guys, because this is a total number, not only the fighting guys, a lot of supply and support guys, and uh, flak, anti-tank and all this stuff. Uh, so we have at least double the amount of raw power plus we have morale we have experience and maybe we have even better equipment all this stuff also be part of a battle calculation so with one you can check the terrain and with f6 you can check always the rules of um, connection how a hex is connected to the next hex hex you, so if you want to go from one hex to the next hex, then you can see this is now a blue border. A blue border means it is an ocean border. So of course this is open sea, so this is all ocean. If you see green, then it means always there is a land connection. And only a land, land connection. Green means land connection only. Blue means sea connection only. You cannot walk from one hex to the next hex. It's only if you have special relationship to the heaven, maybe. The white one is a beach uh, connection. Means you. this is C and you can unload. This means more or less this is important for unloading. You can unload units here. From this to this. And uh, what else we have? Red is a uh, red is more or less uh, blocked. You cannot walk from this. Oops. You cannot enter from this hex to this hex in any way. No ship can enter. You cannot walk enter. Um, and the other, the most important is maybe the purple stuff. Purple is always a river. And the river means always that uh, if you walk from one hex to the other hex and in the other hex is a unit, the unit enter the hex and crossing the river is always forced to do a shock attack. Means more or less, if we go from this location inside Singapore and we have here a purple because Singapore is an island so they say it's like a river. We have this special rule that we enter in the first turn, but only the first turn, is by force, by game rules, a shock attack. So this means more or less a shock attack is the, the higher risk of success in combination with the higher risk of defeat. All this goes in both ways. You risk more, you can win more, but you can also lose more. Uh, and uh, it will also normally not allow you to use artillery, I think. Because it's a shock attack. You don't prepare the attack, you rush the attack. So you try to surprise the enemy. This can be successful, but this can also fail. So if we are lucky, we enter Singapore and it is the first day we already uh, force the enemy to surrender. In worst case, we have I think the same like in Manila. I think Manila was for us more or less the worst case. The first day we have uh, we lost double than the allies. The second day it was equal one to one, and the third battle was more or less than we destroy them. This was Manila, and. This can be the worst case for Singapore too. 
because I believe that he's maybe already starving out because I don't think it was really possible for him to get any supplies inside, at least not in the big numbers. Uh, I mean, Singapore starts with supplies, but and I don't know, maybe we call all supplies at the first turn. Uh, you don't get this information. There is no information how good is the supply situation uh, on the enemy side. This is a... Uh, you cannot make this with pictures. There is uh, only if you start the battle, you can get the information that the enemy unit is uh, lacking supplies. But this can mean that one unit is lacking supplies. This must not mean that every unit here in the hex lacking supplies. But often this is a situation. If one unit have no supplies, then the rest also have no supplies okay see so there's nothing more to do we're waiting that this guy is coming out of the jungle to enter this hex there's a road and the moment he come out i can use this navy guard unit uh, to strike back and try to get rid of him and so far he is walking in the jungle and i use only air force to bomb him so nothing more here to say i prepared and give the command for all my fighters to start to sweep. I sweep a Rangoon and I also sweep a Tongu. Uh, main force will go to Rangoon because I expect he is more. But I also want to check if anything is maybe here. I have not the range to go so far away, but uh, because uh, the Oscars normally operate up to five. And everything is here is Oscars. We have the C, 1C Oscar, the 1C Oscar. This is the 1B Oscar. The main difference is only the... That guy have uh, one light machine gun and one heavy machine gun. And uh, the 1C have uh, two heavy machine guns. So the 1B is more or less a training unit, but still can maybe fight for some time. The experience is also okay. We have here some guys, uh, they don't have so much experience, but they, the skill levels are okay. So I said more or less, uh, I will use them now in this battle of Rangoon at least once or twice. See how they operate, but normally on the long run I will sends them to China, brings them back to pool and only use them for training units. They are not really front line fighters more. Yeah. So next turn we will get, get here air operation if the weather is okay. I mean uh, you can also hear is extreme overcast cast. So if we have thunderstorm or like this then maybe we don't hear the air battle but we will see. Yeah, not much more to do here. Not more much to do. I sent some more cruisers up. I first sent all everything to Georgetown and then from Georgetown I will start additional raiding parties. Go here this coast. And uh, the Bay of Bengal I try to always to intercept to make sure that he get trouble with uh, Calcutta. If I mean he have no railing, so he don't must send much stuff here. But I can try to work in this area. I don't want to go too deep here. First, the range this is too far away, and he maybe can intercept me or lay a trap. So, uh, and uh, I think we discussed this already last time shortly. The two cruisers, they are out of action at least for three months. So I need a shipyard in the long run. I sent first a repair ship on the way to Saigon and then I can, from Saigon I will send it to Georgetown and then we will see maybe I send these guys to Georgetown and let them fix first in Georgetown or I go with a repair ship directly to them, depending how the situation. But I need a repair ship to fix these cruisers faster and get them in a shipyard. So the shipyard can be Singapore or Saigon. Oh yeah, here is normally no change. The submarines are still in position. There's not much traffic, so the submarines are waiting, but... Hmm. 
maybe there will not be more much action. Here I try to call in additional forces for the next assault. We will take of course uh, Balik Papan and uh, there's a lot of oil, 300 and 300 refinery, this you need. But uh, I still need some battleships, some transport stuff. Need one, two, three turns more and then I'm ready. Then I will load, they're preparing. I don't expect too much resistance, but uh, I won't make it safe, I'm sure. I need minesweepers, battleships, all the stuff to make sure that we have a safe uh, landing and then we can easily kick him out of the hex and take the next hex. And then he has also some additional oil, so you need both. And normally after we capture this base, this will be faster because this is a stronger def defense location. Uh, up to the end of the month I still try to take this base, this base, and this base plus this, so that we can say all oh, this, because here is an airport, here is an airbase, here can be also both possible airbase, so these locations you must have to make sure to uh, dominate or at least to, to check and uh, overview this uh, part of the ocean. Because here from this, you can also, this the distance is normally 11 or 12, so from here to here is only 7. Our scouts can fly up to here easily. So we can check all this island chain if we control this base and have here some uh, aviation support. And in the next step is then of course uh, we need Timor, because with Timor we can more or less uh, shut down the part of the port of Darwin because if you have here air scout units you can check in this direction you can check in this direction and normally everything would enter here is under the threat to get a torpedo strike or bomb strike or whatever additionally I have here some this is a typical for me a destroyer group a lot of destroyers lead by one uh, light cruiser similar speed and uh, they only try to hunt here something at the north side of Australia. I don't know how much here is because I don't have still no recon but it's only a... I know here was a lot but this was first some su surprise strikes. I don't know if I do this now too often then he maybe will have here a lot of mines or submarines so I normally don't want to go Darwin again, I want first the airbase and see what is the situation. And uh, always try something new, so I try now this. Normally I must go to Perth, but this is too far away. I need some base here, I need Timor, or I need uh, uh, some base here. S something nearby, this is, so far I operate uh, too, from too far away to send my cruiser, so I, maybe submarines I can send, but uh, step by step. So in this, the rest bases, I mean, these bases are normally, they have no real value, they are empty. There is, uh, yeah, little resources, yeah. I mean, you must take it, yeah, but uh, no high priority. This guy's still driving to Davo. I don't expect much resistance. This unit just finished the fighting, then they will rest one day. You see, I gave them the rest day, and the next turn I will go to with all I have to Clarkfield and finish Clarkfield, and then go to Bataan. If he cannot stop me in uh, Clarkfield, because this is a jungle, rough, means here he get triple defense points. And this is only jungle here, he has only get double points. So if he cannot hold in this location with triple, he cannot hold this location. So we will see if this is successful, and I think it is successful. He lost so many guys, 20,000, oh, I think over 20,000, maybe 25,000 go to prison after the Battle of Manila. So, uh, and now have even more forces. 
normally must work. Yeah, in China you can see we will strike here. This guys will attack. We have one battle here. We also enter this hex, so we will have a attack a battle here in the next turn. But uh, and we moving west to Xi'an. But this needs one or two turns because we must cross a river. You can see river. The Mongolian armies are trying to catch up. And uh, yeah, this will need time. So there's no real change from turn to turn. This is all slowly, slowly. And then Japan is also nothing happened. Normally, we don't get much new stuff. I only regroup something. I use a carrier to create a new torpedo plane training unit because these are out of date torpedo bombers but I still have some in the pool so I change this from 9 to 30 then I will next turn I send this back to Tokyo then I will empty the pool and uh, fill up and then I can train more pilots. Uh, not more much happened. I mean, if you are the Japanese player, you always must uh, keep this Manchukuo garrison in check. Because over time, your garrison will increase. So once per week, you can normally always take some units out of Manchukuo. Most of the units in Manchukuo, starting uh, with... Uh, one third of their units are uh, disabled and disabled units uh, will not give you a sold strength so and after time if you have here some supplies this is normally automatically and you let them rest and train then they will build up the disabled units to fully operational units this means you get more assault strength and this means at the end that this number will increase and uh, you only have the task to keep 8,000. Everything over 8,000 you can normally take out. So, I mean, of course, you cannot get it to exactly 8,000. But uh, check this sometimes. And if you see, okay, it's 8,500 or even 9,000, then check around which unit you want to take out. I will always prefer to take out complete armies. Not only some units, you better try to get a whole army out, like here. The first army, or no, the sixth army. The sixth army is the uh, Kwantung. Kwantung army is Manchukuo. So, I took the whole sixth army out, and I also took some other armies out. But I take the Haku and everything with it. Support units you can normally take all out because they don't have a attack value like this artillery stuff. They don't count for the garrison so you can normally take them all out and then you have more artillery, more anti-aircraft stuff, more airport uh, aviation support. Uh, but uh, I still normally don't do this. Artillery is not really so important in this game and... Uh, the anti-aircraft stuff is normally only useful if the enemy have bombers and China have nearly no bombers or at least Dojo never use them so and if you use them and operate them then you must feed them keep in mind that this is all more far away from your supply chain so everything what you bring in the mountains you, you must feed and if you don't can feed enough then all units will suffer not only one unit so, yeah, and the aviation support, I took out what is what I can take out without uh, destroying everything. I still keep a little aviation support that I can train my pilots here. Because, uh, yeah, to train pilots is never wrong. Yeah, so this is Manchuko. I really cannot tell you much more because... Uh, uh, we only see that these guys are running our low on supply. We require 10,000, but we only get not even 8,000. 
uh, this unit blocks this street, this street going to China, this is also Chinese road. So all supplies only can come this road, but I don't know, I think uh, this units maybe block this. So we must get rid of this unit, so I sent an army, you can see this, here's a small dot. Oops. But we go source and we, so next turn we arrive maybe here, and next next turn we can start the battle. And if we win here, and he not, now we will see if he turns source or west or east or what I know. But uh, we must open this road. This is the most important road because here is Shanghai. If I land, if I will bring supplies from Japan, I will ship them to Shanghai, and from Shanghai we, oops, carry them via rail up to maybe up to this location, and then we use the highway to bring it north. Or we can also bring it up to this location and then walk here. So, uh, but not more much to say about this. Uh, what else? I use smaller forces to conquer all this. Uh, uh, yeah, non-defended units. But there's normally there's only a flag. There's no resources. Nothing. Nothing. It's only you are the owner. You don't pay for it, you don't get anything from it. Yeah. I have still some proper submarines here around Fiji, but uh, somehow nothing happened more. I don't know. Normally, they don't have uh, much detection, so if you don't see detection, then normally they are still in hidden position and waiting for. Some cargo ship car pass by, so I will wait and see. Uh, yeah. And here, only to explain this again, this is a double island. This is an island with a bigger port, you can get it up to five. And this is a neighbor, this is also an island next to it. So here I have all my air force. Here's my air force unit. Because here you get a, this airport is already ready, so why I will build a new airport if I, there's a second stuff with the 6,000. This small, these are all small islands, you can only get maximum 6,000 guys on an island. This island and this island both have only 6,000. If you want to have airport and marine, a navy base at the same island with 6,000, this will not work very well. So. I choose to say here I will operate my submarines and here I will operate all my air force. The only other option because they all are the same 6000, 6000, 6000 only mill uh, milli is uh, with 30,000 so this is a much bigger island and you can normally get here a port 4 what is enough and you can get an airfield 5 is also enough. Uh, but you must rebuild everything. This needs time, and it's a it's a first island, so it's more easy for the allies to make a, a surprise attack. This island still has some cover, only from the north side, maybe not so well. Uh, wake I don't use so much because I really wake and uh, this is the same distance to Pearl Harbor. And so far from this island I only operate submarines. Everything with will will go east coast uh, west coast of USA or Pearl Harbor area operate from this base. And uh, everything will go for uh, Australia. Normally I will up to so far I will use Tok, but soon I will rebuild or build uh Rebul out and uh, if here is a bigger port then I will send all my submarines and all everything normally more or less to Rabul and uh, this is much closer this is a very short distance for my submarines go in go out go in go out uh, more we cannot say there's nothing happened no submarine no enemy crew I found no carriers no cruisers uh, uh, yeah yeah so they only want to do something is me. So far, Dojo only regroup. But maybe it's the right 
choice for him to try to save and fight the other day. This we already discussed all. I think I show this. Sunk last turn. Uh, for the allies by points. If this is all true, we don't know. We know that Exeter, that this we saw go down and the Enterprise and Dauntless, I'm not more so sure. So if we go for all days, then we have uh, the information that we sunk both Brit British ships, two American battleships, uh, light carrier Hermes, and now two heavy cruisers. And uh, one, two, three, four, five, five light cruisers. Oh, not bad, not bad. If this is all true, I don't know. Uh, but uh, looks good. Um, about the pilots, maybe I don't know if I explained this ever. I think for the Americans maybe not so important, but uh, the training command, you need 10 guys, 10 elite pilots for each nation, so the army is a nation, the, Jap the navy is a nation, so you need only 10, but you need the 10, at least 10, but more will not help you, so you only send 10 guys, 10 guys with at least experience of 80. You can also send more, but uh, at least 80. And uh, they will reduce the uh, time. A new pilot normally need 12 months to finish the training. And each month he stay in school, he, you must pay the heavy industry points. And the training command will reduce this time by luck. It's average, maybe down to 10 months. I think not more is possible, but Maybe if you can save one or two months per training per each guy, you still save in the long run a lot of industry points. Yeah. Our top pilots, we have still, but all our top pilots are now in training school, so we have no ace fighting. Two guys are with four kills ease, but uh, the good days are over. There is. Uh, we destroyed all the Malayan British Air Force. We destroyed the Philippines American Air Force. We destroy, I think, mostly of the Dutch Air Force. So now we striking the British Indish Rangoon or Burma Air Force. This will be the new air battle. And we will see how successful this is. Um, Yeah, we can maybe check this because I don't know. We can check, uh, I mean, last turn we saw this. We sunk 31 hurricanes ground, means on the field but or on a transport ship and uh, we don't have any uh, ground attack on airfield. So this must be all on a transport ship. So something we saw, I want battle report show me that there was some hurricanes. So maybe there was more, I don't know. So if we really destroyed 31 hurricane fighters on the ground, then I will say, wow, that is not bad. They are good airplanes, they are equally good to the zero. They have not the range, but they have much more firepower. And uh, we killed seven air-to-air -air Russian I-15s. We saw this in the... This I think in the battle report they always say one 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 one, but in the in the combat animation we always saw two one four or three I don't know but in the total we kill seven, destroyed. Again we don't know the pilots. We lost three torpedo bombers by flag. Okay. And uh, this is the scout planes from the cruiser, two. And this is our operational losses. Means this guy had a damaged machine, tried to land, and in the moment they landing, they crash the machine, and the, the machine is broken. 
and we can see here that uh, the Allies lost this last days 32 and we lost 13. But is this possible? Because we killed 31 plus 7. Oh. So I really don't know completely if this is really from the last day, if we count now from 11th to 12th, and this is this number. Maybe. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Oh, yeah. So this is maybe also fog of war. I trust this numbers normally more because here we can see it's destroyed 26 on the field. And if we go here, then it's 31 plus 2, 33. Hmm. So I, I really don't know, if this is really, I don't know if this is really only from the last day or it's really from the last two days because we make two days turn. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we can see roughly that we have a lot of operational loss because of course we carrier strike is much, have always higher chance of operational loss. To land on a carrier, to start from a carrier is uh, much more complicated than from an airbase. Uh, okay. Not more much to do. Uh, so, and uh, maybe I explain one difference between Alice and Sh Japanese is uh, Air Force reinforcement. I think that the Americans, they don't produce really much. They always get it for free. And they get all, all their squadrons and all their stuff more or less ready to use. Bush. They only must transport it. And the Japanese, they have a mix. You can get like this. This is a complete uh, transport air group. The air group they have a maximum size of 27 and there are 27 airplanes inside ready to use. I think this is like the Americans. They get this like this, ready to use. But you, most of the Japanese stuff is like this. You get a air wing. The air wing have a size. 12 in this case, but inside the air wing is only one plane and one pilot. The rest is empty. So it is up to the player to fill up this unit. And this is why you must produce so many airplanes. You get a lot of reinforcement air wings, but many of them are empty. I mean, here's three, but you only get one. And uh, here are 12, but only two are inside, but two are damaged. So you get two damaged airplanes, but the group is 12, and so on and so on. You can get here the Betty with 27, here's the same. A group size of 27, but only two damaged airplanes with it, without a pilot. So on, so on, on. Here, 42 to 2, and so on and so on. Sometimes you get a full squadrons. But not so often, I don't know, maybe here? No, also. So... But you will get, and this I must say, you get here any, everything, what is possible from the Japanese. You get here even stuff you don't want. So... Maybe I can find something in the future. Uh, uh, where is the stuff I don't want normally? Where is the uh, jack? Normally I don't use jack. Is there any jack? Helen? Oh, somehow I don't see it. Ah, Tony's. Yeah, Tony's I don't use normally. So we get this squadrons now with uh, only two airplanes inside, we can repair them. And uh, then we get 
one second of this but this is all in the beginning of February you get this stuff to this fixed state and if you normally don't use it or if you don't have uh, this machines under production then the best way is maybe fix the two airplanes and then change the air group to something else this will automatically send this uh, airplanes to the pool and if you have enough air wings you don't use and send them all to the pool maybe maybe after some time you have so many airplanes back to the pool that you can then use one wing maybe a smaller air wing with 12 airplanes or whatever and then you can create one of these units you normally don't want but you have this airplane so use them ah yeah this is the idea okay this is the special stuff uh, the japanese most of the air wings you must fill by yourself this is uh, I think special because the Japanese also must uh, order their production for ships what the Americans I think cannot do they I mean the Japanese can speed up or stop the production I think for the Americans there's only standard for the Americans is everything fixed written down okay anything else here no, I mean, we can also check what is uh, running, what I must send back in the future. Wait, I think I touched the wrong one. Replacement, reinforcement, withdraw. Ah, yeah, withdraw. So we can see that in, yeah, in 20 days we must send some scouts back and then roughly a month some fighters and some betties but this is for some 60 days so not much we must send back but sometimes we must send it back hmm. ground uh, this draw is uh, yeah some not without any fighters the only engineers must leave and then first of mid of 42 so we normally, and you can see there's nearly nothing what we will give away. There is, the Japanese army, if you enter the Japanese army, you don't expect to uh, leave the army before the war is uh, won. And there's only two options. You won the war and you are, can return like a hero, or you return dead like a hero. In both cases, you are the hero. The well, difference is only you're dead. Or alive. So this is the Japanese way. Yeah, I think this is first enough because there is really. If you have any questions, uh, please uh, write it in the comments, and then I can explain more. But uh, I think uh, I try to explain everything already before, and we don't have any big change in the situation. Good. Let's go to the tracker maybe for a moment. This we can do fast. Ba ba ba. So, and uh, I think because we still have some stuff. I can explain from the airplane we had already a lot of uh, let's go Air Navy I already discussed uh, I think the Navy bomber was clear why and what the fighters I had already but uh, only to make sure these are all carrier based fighters the zeros and uh, is, is this a Japanese Navy you also have a lot of I mean you have so many air wings with the Navy that uh, there are too many for the carriers normally and uh, then you can use only the zeros if you want but if, if you have a land base then you don't must use carrier base I mean a land base you, you have the option to use something else if you operate from a land base. If it, so and because of this, 
You have normally the Sam. This is the best carrier based fighter. And uh, But if you have land base then you can already also go for uh, the jack because they are land based. These guys you cannot operate from a from a carrier. So and uh, the question is only which land based fighter you want to use. You can say I only want to use zeros. You can do this. But if you say I can also use some land base, then you have normally the option between you can use a, a Jack or you can use a George. And then you can compare this. They both enter exactly the same date. You can see that the Jack is a little faster. Uh, these values are more or less very similar. You can see that uh, these are light machine guns, they don't have normally much impact, so you only fight with the two 20mm. Here you have four 20mm guns, so the George have more striking power, uh, I would say like this. But this is a better interceptor, he can climb much faster. The range is, uh, yeah, the George have more range. Normally I, but the George is a little slower, to be honest. Uh, they are both okay, but I I choose the George. You don't need both. I don't think that you need really both. It's better to focus for one kind. You can upgrade the George to the second egg, and uh, the Jack also can go to the number three. I mean, yeah. Then you can see that the, the George gets a speed bonus, so it's now a little faster, but this is very similar. And uh, now you have here also four 20mm guns. Here, also four 20mm guns. So the firepower is the same. It is really uh, not so big difference. Really, you can, there's, this, they are so similar that I would say, uh, hmm. Then there's the next generation, this is beginning of 45, there's also a George 5, this is much later, so the gap is, there's a little big gap. Uh, here you can see that you get two additional heavy machine guns. Uh, the speed is now very equal, uh, it's really... Mm. Choose one of both and what you like. The George always have a little more range and the Jack have more climbing rate means it's better for intercepting. But okay. And then there's a third option. Uh, because I don't want to ignore this. Uh, yeah, this, this guys you can forget this are uh, super late. And uh, there are two special you don't produce this. But uh, there is uh, this special zero, the SEM. This is the SEM carrier based. This will be. You can also use this one. This is always faster. But uh, the firepower is also not so bad. So you can also only go with the SEM. But you have this. This is a land based SEM. This is uh, the same machine, but it's not carrier capable. So you cannot operate this from carrier. But you can see here they modified some stuff and then they get a little more speed out. They make it a little more tough. And the most important is that these guys have 30 millimeter guns. Front for dogfight and two up for anti-bomber attack. So this can the uh, yeah schräge Musik more or less. Uh, you cannot see it in the picture, but uh, this guy can more or less fly under the bomber and then uh, attack. And the bomber can more or less not uh, fire back. So this is the best land-based Navy fighter. But the problem is it's, uh, it's of course 46, so this is only... Mm, mm.
Yeah. And this is a single production, so there's no chain. This is a, like the other Sam, this is a unique fighter, and this is also a new, unique fighter. And the George and the Jack is a triple. They have three, this is a three, and the Jack is also three. So you can jump from one to the next and jump from the next, you save time. Okay, Navy fighters. More I don't have to say here about this. And now I think, oh wait, we, because we are in the Navy, then we can say Recon. Let's say Recon. This is a, this your starting airplane. And then you have uh, more or less uh, two or three options. The next is in line for of date is this guy. You can see it is the normal range is shorter, but if you use a drop tank, then you get much more range. This guy is also can operate from a carrier, so and they are faster, so everything is fine. And the recon normally need only range and speed, and nothing more. You don't want fight anything. You only want fly fast in, check the area and return. So, and especially if you can get this on the carrier, so you can normally make a group on the carrier. So these guys are the perfect guys for scouting and then all your torpedo bomber, dive bombers and fighters can focus on their main duty to really fight the enemy or protect your carrier. So so, and there's also upgrade, then it gets even faster, so stuff. And uh, then this is the end of the line, and after that you can normally go for this guy. You can see it's even some months more later. This guy is even faster, and have even more range, crazy. I mean, you don't need normally more drop tank, 14 is already a lot. But if you want to give him a drop tank and consume double the resources or double the sorties, uh, I don't know, and you can fly nearly from Tokyo to Pearl Harbor, I would say. Uh, yeah, and this guy even get an upgrade. But uh, if this upgrade is really so much better, oh, I think I won't go. Uh, so let's say this. The original and this is upgrade. You can see the upgrade 400. This is super high speed. And get a radar. I don't know. Yeah, they both have radar. I think the other guy don't have radar. So if you get the radar, you can use them also for night scouting. Because in night intercepting, night fighter is very complicated and not so successful. But to fly at night, and if you have radar, you can still scout and you get the game give us feedback and say there is something. Of course, you don't get uh, maybe so many information, but you get the information there is something. So, but I also don't have experience if it really makes sense. I start the development for this air units, but they are also end game. So, they are very end game. Oops, this is all. This is so you can see end of 44. If we get it six months earlier, we maybe at the beginning of 44, and this maybe at the beginning of 45. Ah, yeah. So, this is a recon stuff transport. Uh, I don't really know if you, I really never use transport so much because for me, transport is always a only emergency situation mm, because uh, a ship is always cheaper you can transport much more stuff uh, with less consume of supplies so you use only transports normally if you have some issue no. but uh, I think we start Emily is a big one. Yeah, we have uh, Tina. Oh, yeah, this is our starter guy. With this we have now. Uh, this is forty-four. 
I think this is the next guy we can produce, but I don't really produce this guy. Here is the important stuff only normally the the load. Two thousand to three and a half thousand. This is floating, this is uh, land based. Uh, but they are all slow. They have no armor. Uh, this have an upgrade. Still no armor, still slow. Uh, the capacity increase a little. Oh, not really. It's only. I think the range increase, huh? huh? Yeah, a little more. So we can compare this and we can see uh, a little more range. But uh, not really better. You have uh, this guy, I have nearly 10,000 load. This is huge. Not bad, but it's 44. We have a. Uh, this is our starter guy. Uh, and we can compare this. We can say this guy, and you have this guy. Yeah, this one, one, yeah. And, uh, yeah. The own. The, the question is. I need 10,000 and 12 and a half thousand. This is not the biggest issue. This guy has armor. They both have no guns, but uh, they have at least armor. It's also faster. And it's a float. So for the open Pacific, this guy is really good. If you want to transport something from a big island to other big island or in the in China Rangoon Burma I don't know maybe you can take this guy but this guy also have more range so the big stuff is only here is a this is a four engine stuff so it is uh, much more expensive to produce this guy you cannot produce it in big quantity but the question is really I need transport airplanes so many I don't know and the betty is a. Uh, I don't know why I want to take a betty. You can see the load is nothing. This make no sense. Yeah, and I think this is all. Uh, maybe because float planes we had float planes fighters are useless. Torpedo bombers we had. This is jet fighters you don't need. Uh, Fighter bombers. Oh, I don't know. I know freely. Uh, I mean, let's say this. We can have. Uh, they are carrier based. This is not carrier based. This is a big difference here. You can carry two, two. Yeah, no one. Only one two hundred fifty kilogram general purpose bomb. So for everything what is have no armor deck, so for destroyer or cargo ships, uh, submarine, you can use them. Uh, and you can maybe change all your fighters. If you say I kick out my fighters and then I have only fighter bombers. But they have no armor. Uh, I don't know. I don't will. I will not go this way because this is no... This is not a bomber, this is not a fighter, it's something between. I don't like this. And this guy is the next generation. Uh, still no armor. And it's far too slow and... Uh, uh, no, no. Then you have this guy. This is also carrier based. Mid of 45. Uh, have armor. No. 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 But the range is short. And again, it's too slow. It's too slow for 45. So I don't know. I think I don't go for fighter bombers. Night fighters. Night fighters. Uh, hmm. 
I don't have experience so much. I only read about this. Uh, we would say this. A night fighter without radar is useless. This is a statement I would. I would say if there's a night fighter but he don't carry radar, how he won't ever find something in the night. So we have a carrier based night fighter but I don't see here radar. And the, what is the difference between a normal fighter and a night fighter if I don't have radar? Uh, maybe there is something in the game will make a difference, but normally there is not a difference. Okay, then we have uh, that guy, this is end of 45. This guy have radar. Have two 20 millimeter guns firing up. Here you can see now the 20 millimeter guys, guns. Have also good range and good speed. So, but not carrier based, so land based is okay. But uh, it's uh, very late. Then you have uh, this guy. It's more early. Here we have the same issue that no radar. So. And the second issue that uh, you have a one up firing 20 millimeter gun. Uh, maybe against a medium bomber is okay, but a heavy bomber you will not down with. To down a B17 or B24 with a one 20 millimeter gun, this is not easy. Okay, so we kick this all out. Then we have this one. This is earlier. Uh, have two 20 millimeter guns up, but no radar. But it's based on the H35, so we know all this engine. This is a standard engine, and have a good range. I mean, the night fighter normally not needs a range, but uh, for escort, you can use it also for escort night fighter bombers or like this. The stuff is that you get here upgrade, and the upgrade gets the radar. And uh, yeah. it's also early, 44, so if you get to push this early, then you get this machine, and then at the moment you get the radar, you also have the machine, so everything is ready. Uh, you can also go for the Francis, also have a radar. I don't know if there's really a big difference. They're a little faster, but... Um, and uh, this guy is for sure the best night fighter the Japanese Navy have. But, but it's uh, 46. This is the only problem. But you can see that he uh, have a lot of fight up. He have two 37mm guns. This penetrate of course everything. Uh, and this is a, uh, I don't know why it say TT, but I think it's a turret. So there's something here, He for I think for defense, this is for offense, so he hunt with this machine. So this guy have a lot of firepower. This guy is also fast. So I would say build this guy. The only problem is that they have the super complicated engine and it's super late. But he is for sure the best night fighter you can produce. Okay, and if we want to check this, uh, oh yeah, and next time I go for army, and then we check the rest of the army. So I will say now, this is enough. I wish you the best, take care, and if you have any questions, write it in the comments, and I will try to give you my feedback. Thank you, take care, bye-bye.